Thank you. We always appreciate the musicians and the leadership of our worship service. Our New Testament lesson for this morning comes from Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give all of their glory and all of this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on a pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I gotta tell you, I did have a great time last week. The cake was great, but this was part of the best thing that happened last Sunday. The kids put together this wonderful book. How many kids were here today who were part of that? Raise your hand. Okay, you did one, and and who else? Anyone? And you did one. Great. I wish I had time to read every one of them. Probably some of you wish I would do that instead of read the sermon. Here's one. I know you can't see this, but it's got uh, a picture of a church and some words. I like short sermons. (laughs) Oh, wait a minute. I made a mistake. I, I like short 45-minute sermons. I do too. I'm going to try to make this one 43 minutes. And uh, let me see. What else? Oh, and here you can see the basketball maybe. You can't see this guy. Yoda is in here. May the force be with you. I like to play football, soccer, baseball, and basketball. I like to watch all of those. And... uh, Here's one. I'm seven years old. I'm glad you're here. I like action. (laughs) And it's got a a drawing of someone on a roller coaster. Obviously not me. (laughs) How many of you like roller coasters? There is something wrong with you people. Do you like roller coasters? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Do you really? The wilder one's the best. The wilder one's the best. Yeah. Or even the Tower of Terror out of Disney. Yeah. I went on that one time. How they do you like they, it. Oh, I did never again. <laughs> they took my picture along with someone else who was sitting next to me at the time. And somebody had taken us to the Tower of Terror who worked at Disney and they, they took us in there and well, have you ever been there? They just drop you down in increments. You're going up an elevator, they drop you down, they lean you out, and then they take your picture, and the person we're with is looking at us like we're nuts, and the person I'm with, he and I, we've got our eyes closed, we're in prayer. I tell you, the worst thing about roller coasters, once you get on those things, they don't let you off. They don't stop, no matter how loud you yell. You are committed fully, completely. There's no halfway. It's kind of like the way the Christian experience ought to be. You're committed. There's no stopping. But a lot of us, 
you know, we get on the roller coaster of faith, we want to get off before the, the, the journey's over with. That's the way it is with so many of our temptations. We're just tempted to go halfway and not commit to the whole experience. Driving up and down the, the road on uh, Curry Ford Road, coming to and from work, I, I notice there are several people dressed up like uh, the Statue of Liberty. Have you seen that? Yes. And they're advertising, trying to get me to go into their place of employment, where for a small fee they will do my taxes. I can't believe it. Have you? How many of you have done your taxes? Man, it's February and you guys are setting a good example. I hope I can find my stuff by April. I read about a person who wrote to the Internal Revenue Service this letter. Several years ago, I cheated on my income tax. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I feel so guilty. So I'm sending you a check for $25. If I can't find sleep, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> We live our lives halfway. Even in repentance, we're halfway committed to that repentance, not fully committed to that. The story is told of a chicken and a pig. They both lived on a farm. That's where chickens and pigs are supposed to be. A farmer walked out into the barnyard one day and asked the animals, told the animals, my wife and I want bacon and eggs uh, for breakfast today. Do I have any volunteers? And the chicken nudged the pig and said, come on, let's volunteer. The pig said, no way. From you, they want a small commitment, a, a, a contribution. From me, they want the whole commitment. We ju we're just chicken. We just want to give a small donation. Not the whole commitment to our faith. When I look at the temptations in uh, Luke's gospel. What I see are the temptations to commit halfway and not completely. And I think that's when the devil is most effective with us in our temptations. We commit to halfway or to part of it and not the full experience of the faith. And the temptation is once we've done that, we think... I we're committed. We're there. We're Christians. We go to church every other Christmas and Easter. We're committed halfway. That's all it takes. And it's almost like being vaccinated. Getting a small part of the disease. Just enough so you don't catch the whole thing. We're kind of like we're vaccinated against Christianity. We got just a little bit in our system. And we're not committing to the whole thing. How many Cub Scouts are with us today? Raise your hand. There are no Cub Scouts. Anybody ever heard of the Cub Scouts? <laughs> What's the motto of the Cub Scouts? Do you know? Gee, you didn't know there was going to be a test today. Anybody? It's not be prepared. There was something else. What was it? It's do your best. Be prepared comes later in life. But as Cub Scouts, it's do your best. And most of us, we just do enough to get by. With faith, <laughs> with paying our late taxes, <laughs> with whatever it is. We just do enough. The halfway. Let's think about these temptations that Jesus experienced. One of them, I, I think, was the temptation... For half a life. Not a full life. But half a life. You remember this temptation? Jesus is in the desert. And the devil says, If you are the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. That's being concerned with half a life. And Jesus responds by saying, One does not live by bread alone. Because Jesus knows that the whole life is your body and your spirit. And we need to take care of our bodies. Some of us need to take better care of our bodies. But we need to take care of our body and our soul. 
And a lot of us exercise our body. How many of us exercise our souls? And Candy, when she was up here with the kids, she was talking about, uh, the, the, she acknowledged the fact that the kids were at a point where they're too young to really have memorized a lot of scripture. And she gave them one special verse of scripture, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Most of us who are older, we still use the excuse that we're not old enough to memorize a lot of scripture yet. <laughs> How many of us exercise our souls with the discipline of memorizing scripture, hiding it within our hearts for the day-to-day -day experiences? How many of us exercise our souls by reading the scriptures, by engaging in prayer, the devil comes along and he tempts Jesus with half a life. Just take care of your body. Turn this rock into bread. Take care of your stomach. And that's all you need to do. But Jesus knows one does not live by bread alone. The other temptation here is to be satisfied with half of a truth. Um, what is it that... Uh, uh, the devil says to him, the, the second uh, temptation, um, to you I will give their glory. Talking about all the kingdoms of the world and all of their authority. It's been given over to me. I can give it to anyone I please. If you worship me, it'll all be yours. You see, in that line there are half-truths. And I've been on the internet, and I've gotten emails, and I've been on Facebook, and I know this is a culture that is satisfied with half-truths. As long as we see part of it, we believe the whole package. And we are so easily deceived, we're so gullible, we don't test things the way we should. The devil's right. All of this authority can be given over to Jesus. In fact, Matthew's Gospel ends with Jesus saying, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The half part comes in when it says, It's been given to me. I can give it to anyone I please. Then worship me. And that's the lie. It's in God's hands to give all authority over to Christ. And yes, we are to worship. But we are to worship God and only God. And that's the half truth that we are so tempted with. That passage that Jesus uses to uh, combat this temptation, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. That comes out of an Old Testament passage, Deuteronomy. And the full texture of that passage has this wonderful moment when God is telling the people who are about to enter the promised land of all the things they're going to see in the promised land. And they're going to see a land full of cities, which you did not put there, and houses full of things, which you did not put there, and wells that you did not dig, and vineyards, which you did not plant. And when you get into the land the Lord your God promised you, be careful, lest you forget the Lord your God brought you to this place. We are to worship the Lord our God because He gives us all these wonderful things. We are to worship Him and worship Him alone. But we so often forget who brought us to this place, who gave us these things in life. And we worship, maybe not the devil, but our jobs, or what we think of as good fortune. And we don't worship the Lord our God. We settle with half of a truth. Interesting thing about this chain of events in Luke's gospel with this temptation business, Jesus fights every one of them with a quotation of scripture. Another reason why we, we should memorize scripture and make it part of the fabric of our thinking. Well, Satan comes along at the very end, the devil comes along at the very end and uses scripture to tempt Jesus one last time. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, 
God will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. It's so easy to have half of a faith and to believe half the Bible and to accept half the word of God. And Jesus, however, accepts the whole of scripture. And some scripture is pretty difficult to understand. But the best interpreter of scripture is scripture itself. And yes, it does say that God will send the angels to guard Jesus. So why could, couldn't he just throw himself off of that place and see if it'll happen? But Jesus, knowing the full realm of scripture, says, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So often... We satisfy ourselves with just half the truth, half the Bible, half a life. When Paul in the Bible, in the book of Acts, is on trial for his faith, he called people who were following Jesus followers of the way. He didn't say followers of the halfway, but followers of the way. And if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, you need to follow 100% of the way, not the halfway. There's a story about Alexander the Great, who he was always so harsh to those who so, showed cowardice and always so uh, supportive of those who showed b bravery, especially on the battlefield. And one time, a prisoner was brought before him for judgment. He had been... Uh, someone who had deserted his post in a time of battle. And Alexander asked him, what is your name? And the prisoner said, Alexander. What? That's my name. And he grabbed him by the throat. And he said, I'm going to let you live. But you either need to change your name or change your behavior. We are called Christians today. We're called by the name of Christ. We need to follow the whole way. Or we need to change our name. Because we can't be called Christians. We need to devote all of our heart to God. Now this is Lent. This is the time when we examine ourselves. More than any other time, we're called upon to self-examination. And every one of us here, we follow God halfway. We know that. We need to repent. Follow Him more fully. Trusting in His grace to forgive us for those times when we have not quite followed fully. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might.